This is the Mountain Makalu 67. It is a 67 gram, hence the name, lightweight, in fact, featherweight mouse with the new PixArt PAW3370 sensor. It's an incredibly impressive mouse and costs ever so slightly more than the competition from people like Glorious and their Model D and O. So is it worth the difference? Well, let's take a look at it, have a play with it, explain more about it and well, see if we can get the answer to that. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Like I said, this is the Makalu 67, and the 67 is for its weight in grams, which is incredibly light. It gets there using the rather obvious, well, considerable lack of material on the back of the mouse with its rib cage design, also its lightweight ABS plastic, and a relatively simple PCB. Now, the mouse itself, despite being very, well, holy, is actually very rigid, and that's kind of a surprise. A lot of these very lightweight mice offer little in the way of actual structural rigidity, and it doesn't take too much to accidentally actuate one of the buttons, or just have it bend or flex or even flat out break. But this design seems to do a very good job of that because you can crush this in any direction and it's still solid. One of the other nice things about this design is that the holes that are in the, the ribcage design don't extend past the sort of center line of the mouse. What that means is that the mouse left and right click buttons and the sides where your fingers actually sit well, those don't have any holes, which is actually really nice for when you're holding onto it. It's much nicer to grip onto a solid, if slightly serrated for extra grip surface, rather than a very holy surface like on some of the other mice. But the downside to this design specifically is potentially because of these indentations, potentially because of the slightly sharp edges to them, it kind of feels almost like a cheese grater in your palm. It's not overly uncomfortable, it's just, I guess, a little distracting. You do get used to it, but when you're gliding it around, especially if you slightly move it away from your palm and then move it back, because this is definitely a, a palm grip mouse, it just has a slight weird sort of gripping texture. It takes a bit of a, a while to get used to. One of the regular downsides of these kind of mice is that beyond the immediate structure rigidity of just holding onto it, often the left and right clicks and especially any side buttons that the mice have tend to be, well, let's say under reinforced. But on this, the left and right clicks feel good. They're plenty tactile. They're, they're fairly standard now Omron switches, uh, but they feel pretty good, feel pretty tactile. And the side buttons, have a nice tactile click to them, a nice amount of travel without being too deep, but then that's where the travel ends. It's incredibly well reinforced and I can basically push on this as hard as I want and they still don't move anywhere, which is a really nice change from some of the other lighter weight mice. The sensor that Mountain has used here is the Pixar PAW3370, which is an upgrade over the now older PMW3389. Supposedly it has 50% less error rate, which is fine and always nice. It also goes up to 19,000 DPI now, although I'm not sure that anyone who buys this mouse would ever set it anywhere near that high anyway and has a, a one to two millimeter adjustable in their software lift off distance. And actually speaking of their software, it's remarkably well designed, easy to use. You can customize everything you would expect, including that lift off distance setting between low and high. And you can set the DPI modes of which you have five available on the mouse that you can cycle through with the, the button on the top and the four LEDs to show you what state you're in and can go anywhere between 100 and 19,000 DPI in 50 DPI increments. Tracking on the new sensor is pretty decent. I found when I first started using it, the, the tracking just felt a little bit twitchy. I felt when I was you know, going to left click or on the, the desktop, for example, I would click, but then it would also drag slightly. And I had to generally turn the DPI and sensitivity settings down just a little bit. I ended up getting used to it relatively quickly, but there was a, a little bit of a learning curve, especially when even just trying to aim in games, I would get to a point and where a, a, you know, a, a head was, but it would still twitch just a little bit more, potentially because of my incredibly shaky hands, but still took a little bit of a while for me to get used to it. And as for the mouse's movement, the fairly large PTFE pads on the bottom make it glide really smoothly. 
Like, that combined with the, the incredibly light, lightweight made it one of the, the smoothest and easiest to flick around mice that I've tested with, and despite this being the same weight as the Glorious model who I've already reviewed, it still felt just a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to glide on, and if you end up burning out these pads, then they include a spare set in the box as well. So what's it like to game on? Well, as you can tell by the clips of me playing CSGO, I'm, I'm not great at that, and it's also a little bit awkward trying to play and film myself at the same time, so I'll give you the synopsis of my, let's say, off-camera testing with it, rather than the stuff that you can directly see. Now, my experience with this was pretty fantastic. The, the light weights, the, the nice glides, the, the sensor, all of that made it a very enjoyable experience. I can't say that it made me any better at playing these games. Um, games like Cod Warfare, one that I'm a bit more familiar with and, and um, a little better at, I suppose. Uh, but I can say that the mouse wasn't the bottleneck in my progression of, of getting better at those games, so that's always a good thing. In a game like Hard One Warfare, it definitely suits a, a more aggressive playstyle because it allows you to flick around incredibly easily to run into a room and still take out all of the enemies around you. And it's a, it's a very impressive, very accurate mouse and the, the ability to change DPIs very quickly. I know some obviously have it still up top, but the, the very simple LEDs, actually, it was just that slight bit easier to know what profile I was in, and if I'd gone up one or gone up two, it was a nice little note, and actually, even though the nice little note of the USB cable has a slight rise in the front, just so that it stays out of your way when you're lifting around, Little details like that make it just that slightly bit better of a, a gaming experience. If you like mice like the Glorious Model o or the other lightweight mice that are on the market, then you will like this. It is a very enjoyable experience to use, very easy to glide. It's definitely for slightly sort of medium to large hands and definitely a palm gripper's dream, but it was fairly comfortable, minus the sort of cheese grater feel on the back. Uh, very easy to use, very easy to, to click on those heads. And so, if you like lightweight mice, if you like a, a nice fast flicking around experience, then definitely give this one a try. It's currently listed for £60 on their site, which puts it at ever so slightly more than options like the Glorious Mono O. But I think with the newer sensor, the nice lightweight and rigid design, and the, the nice little touches, make it worth giving it a try. It's not quite for me, I'm not quite the uh, the target audience for this, I'm not a, a, a you know competitive CSGO, COD or whatever else FPS player, um, and I personally prefer a few more buttons on the side, but I can definitely see the market for it and I can see people enjoying it very much. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Macaloo 67? Is it one you'd pick up yourself or would you go with a different option or is it just not for you entirely? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Now if you want to check out the Macaloo 67, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. That'll be a link to their site where you can check it out there and I might leave a few other links uh, in the description to it if I can find them elsewhere as well, which may or may not be affiliate links, so be warned. Otherwise, if you want to check out the rest of the links in the description, feel free to do so. There are a load of options for ways to support the channel and get cool stuff like merch hoodie, hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or access to our Money Min Discord and uh, sponsor free videos through Patreon, or other affiliate links if you're buying from people like Overclocks UK or Amazon if you want to check out my, uh, my main gaming and editing PC. A load of stuff for you to take a look at. There will also be some more videos on the end cards, including the Glorious Mono Overview, if you want to check that one out. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you on the next video.